So let's talk a little bit about analysis of variance as a concept, and we'll also see how it's applied to the one-way analysis of variance test. So as noted, the concept of analysis of variance flows through a lot of statistical methods. So we want to get a good conceptual understanding of exactly what does it mean to um, analyze variance, and what do we mean by sums of squares, explained or unexplained sums of squares, and so on. So we're going to work with a simplified example here. So we're going to continue on with that example of comparing weight loss for um, diets. But here I've simplified it to only looking at three diets. And we're going to compare the weight loss of three observations in each group. And again, this is done so that we can have a simple set of data and the pictures we're going to draw don't get overcomplicated with having you know, 60 different points on there. So here we can see for diet A, here's the weight loss for the three individuals. For diet B, here's the weight loss for the three individuals. And for diet C, again, the weight loss for the three individuals. And what I've drawn in here sometimes gets called the overall mean or the grand mean. Okay, it's the average weight loss in the study of all these individuals, ignoring the fact that they might be on different diets. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the idea of total sum of squares. So we can look at how far does each individual move from the overall mean. Okay, so I'm going to draw those in here. So here we're looking at how far is each person from the overall mean. And these are giving us some idea of the total variability in weight loss. So what we call the sum of squares, okay, so we write SS for sum of squares total, total sum of squares, is we're going to sum over all of these observations, okay, all nine here, how far is the individual, right, how far is each point from the overall mean, okay, I'm just going to write overall y bar, meaning the overall mean of weight loss in all of the study squared. So again, if you want to think of it um, in terms of the graph, we're going to sum over all of these distances here squared. How far is each individual from the overall mean? Square that, do that for all of them, add them all up. Okay, total sum of squares. This we can use to get to the idea of the total variability in y, okay, or total variability in weight loss. So here, right, s squared, the variance, the sample variance for the total, okay, or for y, is rather than making it too messy, I'm just going to write this here, the sum of squares total. So this top here, divided by its degrees of freedom, n minus 1. So what I want to point out here is this is getting us the total variance in y. How far is each individual from the overall mean squared divided by its degrees of freedom? Okay, total variability in y or total variability in weight loss. So the top half of the formula for variance is what gets called a sum of squares. We're summing up a bunch of squares. So we're going to analyze the total variability. So to do that, we're going to try and take the total variability in weight loss and separate it into a few different parts. So let's start to build up that concept. So the first thing I want to think about is why did we not see everyone having the exact same weight loss? And I'll just write WL to shorten it. So some people lost a lot of weight, some people lost um, relatively less. And it might seem like a silly question, but let's think about it for a moment. Why did not everyone lose exactly, say, 10 pounds? And that's a few reasons. The first one, which you might be thinking, is, well, diets might be different. So diets may differ from each other which is true, right? Maybe this person lost a lot more than this person because diet A might be more effective than diet B. Well, what about all these people who are all on diet A? How come they didn't all lose the exact same amount of weight? Of course, we wouldn't expect that in the real world, but we're, we're trying to think our way through the concept. So I'm going to say that people are different. There's biological variability. Take two people, put them on the exact same diet, they're not going to lose the exact same amount of weight. Words that we um, attach to these 
Weight loss might be different because diets are different. We call that explained by diet. They are explained by X. And the fact that people are different, this is just random or unexplained. So we call it unexplained by diet or by X. So again, to repeat that, everyone in the study had slightly different weight loss, and that's for a few reasons. Why did this person here not lose the same as this person here? Well, maybe diet A and diet B are different. Taking two people who are on the same diet, why did they not lose the exact same amount of weight? Um, we can't explain why. That's just random variability. Maybe biological differences. It's due to other factors other than the diet. Right? Since they're both on the same diet, it's not attributable to diet. So what we'd like to do is take this idea of total variability. So I'm going to write that here. The sum of squares total. And we're going to see how this can be divided into two parts. Okay, we can take it and we can separate it into sum of squares that we're going to say is explained by diet and a sum of squares that's unexplained. And we're going to go through um, graphically. Okay? You can take a look at the algebra of, of how the total sum of squares can be separated into these two parts. Um, again, if you have a stronger background in mathematics, you can work your way through it and, and have a good understanding of it. And you can take a look at that. It's in a lot of sets of notes and textbooks. I'm going to get a, at a graphical version of that. Okay, and before I do that, I just want to attach a few other words here. Sometimes the variability that is explained by diets being different gets called the between. And the unexplained sometimes gets called within. So I'm going to use these, I'm going to alternate between calling it between and within or explained and unexplained. Okay, and we'll see it graphically in a few different ways. Okay, so let's start to build up that idea. So what I'm going to do, okay, again, we're going to look at these concepts graphically. I'm going to pick on one observation. So I'll pick on this one here. And we're going to try and get at the concept of how we can take the total sum of squares and separate it into how much do we think is explained by diet, how much is not explained by diet. This picture here showed the total variability. And now we'd say, well, we shouldn't look at how far each person is from the overall mean. Diets might be different. Someone who's on diet A, let's say this person here, they shouldn't be losing the average weight loss in the study. You know, statistically, we'd expect them to be on the average for diet A. So here I've drawn in the average of those three, um, right, the sample mean or sample average for those three individuals. So I'd say this person here, I wouldn't expect them to be the average weight loss in the study. Diet A appears to be a bit better. I'd expect them to be the average weight loss for diet A. So this jump up here, we're going to call the explained. Out of this total variability, I can explain this part. I wouldn't expect them to be sitting on the mean in the overall study. I'd expect them to be sitting on the mean for diet A, right? They're part of diet A. But they jumped a bit above the mean. Okay, and why did they jump above the mean? I can't explain that. It's random variability or it's due to other factors, okay? But other factors that are not diet. So this is unexplained. Again, unexplained by diet. Let's write some of these out here. So again, as I mentioned, you can take a look at the, the algebra of this, but the total sum of squares can be separated into these two parts. We have the sum of squares between, or again, if you want, you can think of it as the explained, right, the part that's explained by diet or explained by x variable. To get this, we're going to sum, again, over all of the observations, how far is the group's mean? So I'm going to write it this way. The group's mean from the overall mean squared. Right? So again, look in there. How far is the group's mean from the overall mean? Right? This distance here. And square that. Those are going to contribute to the 
sum of squares between. Okay, and we're going to do that for all the observations. Here in the picture, we're just highlighting one to focus on the concept, but the sum of squares between is for all these observations, how far is the group mean from the overall mean square? And again, this contributes to what we can call the variance, right, the sample variance between groups, or sometimes it gets called the mean squared between groups, is the sum of squares between groups divided by its degrees of freedom, which happen to be k minus 1. Okay, again, so k being the number of groups. 1, 2, k equals 3 groups, minus 1. We've got the mean for group 1, for group 2, and group 3. Right, those are our three um, degrees of freedom to start with, and we lose one having to estimate the overall mean. So maybe to make this complete, I should add in the mean for group B, say the mean for group C. Now, we've got the unexplained portion. We've got the sum of squares within a group. We can also call this the unexplained, the part of the variability that's not explained by the diet. And here, again, we're going to sum over all of the observations. How far is the individual from their group-specific mean? So how far is the individual from their group's mean and squared? So mathematically, if we take this total distance, right, the total sum of squares, so this distance squared, we can separate it into being this distance squared plus this distance squared. You'll notice mathematically, right, if you work it out, this squared is not equal to this squared plus this squared. But the concept holds over all of the observations. If for every single observation, we take all of these totals, the blue distances squared, that's going to be equal to the sum of squares explained plus the sum of squares unexplained. Let me write it down here. The sum of squares between plus the sum of squares with it. Okay, and again, this is the top half of the variance formula. If we want the variance or variability within a group, sometimes called the mean squared within, it's the sum of squares within divided by its degrees of freedom, which are n minus k. Okay, and again, calculating within group variability, that's going to come from squaring the n observations, and we lose the three degrees of freedom when we have to estimate each of the group means. So k being three, we start with n total observations of nine, and we lose three degrees of freedom. We've had to estimate the three group means in calculating that. So I just want to uh, redraw this picture a little bit and add one more visual. I'm going to draw it the same, label the parts slightly differently. That's going to help connect a bit better rather than thinking of it as explained and unexplained, the between and the within. So we've redrawn a smaller version of this plot here, again, just to highlight the between and within group variability. So we've taken this total variability, how far is each individual from the mean, and we saw that this can be separated into that that is explained by diet or going on between diets, and that which cannot be explained by diet or is within a diet. So first let's highlight the between. We saw that's looking at how far is the group mean from the overall mean squared. So that's looking at this distance here. How far is the group mean from the overall mean? And squaring those. Okay, so that's the part that contributes to the between group variability. How far is each group's mean from the overall mean squared? Sum those up for all observations. Within group variability is looking at how far are the individuals from their group specific mean. And how far is each individual from their group's mean? So again, this is looking at variability within a group or within a diet. So mathematically, that total sum of squares can be separated into two parts. How much of it is going on between diets and how much of it goes on within a diet. So it's important to note there's many names that get thrown around for these. Um, 
So it can be helpful for you when you look at different sources to try and match the different names that get used. Often, the sum of squares between groups gets called the explained sum of squares, or sometimes the sum of squares model, sum of squares treatment, sum of squares regression. Okay. Similar to this here, the mean squares between, the explained mean square, the mean squared model, um, the treatment, regression, these are terms that usually get used. The sum of squares within a group sometimes gets called sum of squares that's unexplained, sum of squared error, or sum of squared residual. Okay, so again, lots of different names that get used for the exact same concept. Um, a few kind of important notes to close on. This picture is really good, I think, at getting at the concept. There is a slight flaw in it, in that here we're looking at the distances, how far is an observation from the mean, and these sums of squares are actually those units squared. Okay, so just to pick on one observation, picking on this one here, we'd actually say how far is the group mean from the overall mean. This is the explained for that individual. This is the unexplained for that individual. Okay, so I said the picture doesn't fully show stuff. There are some slight flaws in it. And the, the flaw is that these are in the distances. The math is actually the distances squared. But when we do it over the collective, the blue distances squared add up to the orange distances squared plus the pink distances squared. Okay, so um, it's just worth pointing that out. I guess a few other terms that I want to point out before we, we close on this is that you can think of these in some sense as taking the total sum of squares and we're separating them into signal and the noise. This is how much is explained or due to treatment, the signal we're getting. This is how much is unexplainable or, or noise. Okay, so again, we can think of this here as giving us something about the signal, and this here, the noise. So when working through and building up the test statistic for one-way analysis of variance, what we want to do is we're going to end up wanting to compare these two. The variability between groups to the variability within groups. Okay, so we're going to start to do that. Essentially, we're going to take the ratio of these two, but let's get into building up the test statistic for one-way analysis of variance. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Share our videos. Stick around, guys, because we got lots more.